I call this project Deep Blue. This name represents the unknown, the world explored by very few. In this case, it's the world of modding, unknown to the average gamer. There's a couple objectives I would like to accomplish in this series. Number one, I want to give you a look into the development of a game modification. In this case, it's going to be a StarCraft II map. This is something that many people just don't get to see, so I'm gonna show it to you. And I'm gonna show you everything. I'm gonna be starting from scratch, and then I'm gonna work on implementing game mechanics to terrain, to triggers, the programming, to beta testing, and eventually to the finished product, and beyond. Which means sometime near the end of the series, you're going to have a game that you can play with your friends. This is a map that will appear on the custom games list on Battle.net. And if you're a StarCraft 2 player, you'll be able to eventually play this map. So it's not just a series of videos that is being made here, it's an actual StarCraft 2 map that you can play. One thing I want to point out for this series is that, for the most part, it's going to be unscripted. I just have a set of talking points right here in front of me, and I'm just going to be going through them. So first of all, you're probably wondering what sort of experience I've had in the past that qualifies me to do this sort of thing. Well, if you've played Warcraft 3 custom maps, you've probably heard of a series of maps called the S3 Marine Corps. It's basically a 12-player co-op series of maps where you control one marine and you can get an assortment of weapons and you get to kill lots of things. And one of the features it had was a password system where you would obtain a password at the end of the game and this saves all of your stats that you've obtained over time, such as award points, which is basically your experience, and this allows you to carry all the experience from that game over to the next game. So at the start of a game, you load your password and you continue from there. And you just get stronger throughout the entire time you're playing these maps. So now we're going from Warcraft 3 to Starcraft 2. So instead of a co-op map that I'm going to be developing, I'm going to be making something competitive. So let's get started. Here's a brief summary of what the game is going to be like. The map will support at least 10 players, with two teams playing against each other, so it's going to be at least a 5 versus 5. The game will revolve around modern combat, so you'll be dealing with weapons like M16s, MP5s, AK-47s, stuff like that. The map is going to be played AOS style, with multiple lanes. Uh, for those of you who don't know, AOS stands for Aeon of Strife. And the most popular Warcraft 3 map in this style is, of course, Dota, or Defense of the Ancients All-Stars. Now for this series, I'm actually going to be comparing Dota to the map that I'm going to be making, because it's somewhat in a similar style, but there's some game mechanics in Dota that I want to minimize in my map. One of them is the concept of farming. This is where you go around gaining gold, gaining experience, and there's really not much happening in terms of player versus player action. You might have the opportunity to take out a hero early on, but those are, I wouldn't say rare, but they're uncommon. It's once the heroes are at a much stronger level, say between 10 to 15, that's when the action starts to pick up. So for my map, I want player versus player action to be possible right from the start. At level 1, you have the potential to kill someone. Now the second reason I want to minimize farming is because during the late game, there's going to be a large discrepancy between levels, say 5 or 6 levels. At that point, those heroes are more or less unstoppable. It's still somewhat possible to take out those high-level heroes, but it's extremely difficult to do, and, and there is very little chance that you can catch up to them in levels. So for the most part, the game is done at that point. Three quarters into the game, maybe a little bit later, the game is done, basically. And that's what I want to minimize. So as an extreme example, 
What I want to be able to do is have, say, a level 1 hero able to take out a level 30 hero. Something like this should be possible in my map. Of course, the level 30 hero is going to have an advantage by being able to absorb, say, 4 or 5 more hits, but that's really all it should be. I'll actually talk about this a little bit more as the series progresses. Now let's talk about a little bit more on the core gameplay mechanics. The game will be played as a top-down shooter. To give you an idea of what that's like, take a look at a game called Alien Swarm. As you can see, you can move around with the keyboard and you aim with the mouse. It has very simple controls and it relies much more on the skill of the player rather than how powerful the character is or how powerful the weapons are. So for my map, I'm making it possible to dodge another player's attacks. You'll also be able to choose your weapons and equipment. This will function similar to the hero selection at the start of a game. So once you pick your weapons, you're going to have it for the rest of the game. I'll also be incorporating mission objectives into the map, and this will function like a tech tree or upgrades for your units. I'll be getting into that later on as the series progresses. So now I've discussed all the theory, all the basics of the map, let's start making the StarCraft 2 map. So here's the map editor. We got some boring terrain in front of us. It's all flat, sandy, and not fun at all. We're going to get into that eventually. After all, the terrain has more to do with the graphics than the actual gameplay. So the first thing we're going to do is implement the core gameplay. And the most important thing we need to implement right now is the movement. Because obviously you need the hero to move. And to do that, we want to be able to control the hero with the WASD keys. So we're going to go into the trigger editor and we're going to have a few triggers for it. So what this is going to do is the triggers are going to run based on the key presses. So for example, I press the W key and the hero is going to move up. If I press the S key, it's going to move down. As you can see, there's really not much code, but that's how simple it is really. So let's go into StarCraft 2 and I'll show you what exactly happens. As you can see here, I can move the marine around without having it selected. This is purely done using the WASD keys. I can move in 8 directions, which is unfortunately the limitation with WASD. But the movements are smooth, and I don't have any problems when I press 3 or more keys. Now you'll notice the white dome in front of the marine that seems to teleport all around. This is actually a dummy unit. This is actually supposed to be both invisible and invulnerable, which I'm gonna be doing that later. Now the reason I have this dummy unit is so that the camera will lock onto it. Because what I want the camera to look at is what's in front of you. So you'll notice that when I move around, the camera will center on the dummy unit, and if I change directions, the dummy unit ends up teleporting to the direction that I'm now moving in. When I stop moving, the dummy unit actually stays on top of the marine. So now I have a view of everything around me. One thing I still need to do is increase the speed of the camera. If you notice, it looks kind of sluggish, but I don't know how to do that yet. I have to look it up. And that's really all I have right now. It's entertaining for, say, 5 seconds, and then it gets boring again. But that's really what modding is all about. You implement one feature, you're entertained for a bit, and then you're bored of it. So then you gotta go back and make something else. And this cycle continues until you have a playable game, where everything goes together and entertains you for several minutes, maybe a few hours. And of course, there's still a lot of work to do. I still need to clean up the GUI, the, which stands for the Graphical User Interface, which basically means I have to remove the resources at the top right of the screen and get rid of the interface at the bottom of the screen, we're actually going to be implementing our own interface. It's going to display the hero's health and a lot of other stuff that I'll be talking about later on in this series. There's not much here right now, but we have a solid foundation for the gameplay. 
being able to move is the most important aspect of the game. So in the next episode, we're going to build onto that by allowing our hero to attack. And then we'll go from there, building onto what we already have until we have something playable. So that's really it for the first episode of Deep Blue. I hope you'll enjoy this and I hope you'll join me on this epic journey into StarCraft 2 mapmaking.